Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Let's start the series of drug information where we could learn about various aspects of drugs like mechanism, uses, adverse reactions, etc. Let's start it with the drug name called Riocigot, which comes under pharmacological class of soluble guanylate cyclase stimulator. The topics that we are going to cover are uses, mechanism of action, doses, pharmacokinetics, adverse reactions, and contraindications. To know about the uses of Riosigot, we first need to understand about the cardiopulmonary system and how it works. As the name suggests, the organs involved in this will be heart and lungs. So let's see how the blood circulation works between them. The blood that gets filled in right ventricle will be pumped through this pulmonary artery carrying the deoxygenated blood to the lungs. In the lungs, O2 and CO2 exchange will happen and pulmonary veins carries oxygenated blood from lungs to left atrium and fills the left ventricle of the heart from where the blood gets pumped through iota to various parts of the body. We just focus the circulation that involves pulmonary artery because Rio Sigurd have action in it. So the first use is pulmonary arterial hypertension where the pressure exerts against the walls of pulmonary artery and the other one is chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension which refers to high blood pressure in the pulmonary artery that caused to be blood clots and related scarrings. Mechanism of Action Pulmonary arterial hypertension is associated with endothelial dysfunction where the blood vessels get constricted, impact synthesis of nitric oxide which is an important molecule responsible for vasodilation and the last one is insufficient stimulation of NOSGC CGMP pathway. Let's discuss more about this pathway because Rio Sigurd is going to work in this pathway. The ultimate endpoint that the Rio Sigurd is going to produce will be vasodilation which leads to decreased blood pressure anti-aggregation where the aggregation of platelets will be inhibited and anti-remodeling where the remodeling of blood vessels caused due to hypertension will be inhibited. For these three things to happen, there should be an increased synthesis of cyclic guanosine monophosphate which is a secondary messenger produced inside the cells. So for synthesis of CGMP, Riosigot acts in two different ways. One is Riosigot sensitizes the soluble guanylate cyclase enzyme to nitric oxide and as a combination they will increase the synthesis of CGMP. And the other way is Riosigot will act independently and increases the CGMP. Coming to the doses, Rio Sigurd is available in 5 variants like 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2 and 2.5 mg. If patient has high risk for hypotension, then can initiate the dose by 0.5 mg thrice daily or else can initiate the dose from 1 mg thrice daily and should titrate till 2.5 mg thrice a day with interval gap of equal to or greater than 2 weeks. If therapy is interrupted, then retitration needs to be done. If therapy needs to change over from sildenafil to riosigot, then washout period of equal to or greater than 24 hours should be given. Whereas in case of tadalafil, washout period of equal to or greater than 48 hours should be given. In case of vice versa, from riosigot to sildenafil, then the same equal to or greater than 24 hours should be given. In kidney impairment, if CRCL, that is creatinine clearance, is greater than or equal to 15 ml per minute, then no dosage adjustments are needed. But if creatinine clearance is less than 15 ml per minute, then use is not recommended. In hepatic impairment, based on child puck classification, dosing needs to be altered. Child puck score, which is a system used for assessing the prognosis of hepatic disease. If hepatic involvement is mild to moderate, it comes under child puck class A and B. In that situation, no dosage adjustments are needed. Whereas in child puck class C, then use is not recommended because studies on this have not been done yet. In case of toxicity, if patient is having hypotension, decrease the dose by 0.5 mg 3 times daily. And if patient have pulmonary edema, consider the possibility of pulmonary veno-occlusive disease. Then Riosigo treatment should be discontinued because it doesn't have an action on pulmonary veins. Coming to pharmacokinetic nature of Riosigo. First, let's see about distribution. Distribution is defined as hypothetical fluid volume through which the drug is dispersed. Volume of distribution is equal to 
X bar C, where X is the amount of drug administered and C is the concentration that are available in blood plasma. The volume of distribution for using out is 30 liters. Next up is plasma protein binding, which means the degree to which medications is attached to proteins in the blood. So protein binding capacity for using out is 95%. Next is metabolism. Via CYP1A1 enzyme, reosigote gets metabolized to active metabolite AM1, which is one third or one tenth as potent as parent drug, which further gets metabolized to inactive N glucuronide. Fourth one is bioavailability. That is the degree and rate at which the drug is absorbed into the bloodstream. Bioavailability for reosigote is 94%. Fifth one is half-life, that is the time taken for drug plasma concentration to reduce to half. Half-life for Rio Cigot will be 12 hours. Sixth one is peak plasma time, that is the time at which the maximum concentration is attained in the plasma. Rio Cigot takes 1.5 hours to attain peak plasma. Seventh one is excretion. It's a process in which metabolic waste will be eliminated from the body. For Rio Cigot, 53% gets excreted via feces and 40% via urine. Coming to additional considerations, plasma concentrations of Rio Cigot are reduced by 50-60% to in smokers. Adverse reactions reported till now are dizziness, headache, dyspepsia, hypotension, hemorrhage, and anemia. Coming to contraindications, Rio Cigot should not be given to pregnant women because of its teratogenic effect and those who are co-administered with medications like nitrates, example amyl nitrate, and specific phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors like sildenafil, tadalafil, and verdenafil, and non-specific phosphodiesterase inhibitors like dipyridamol and theophylline because of additive hemodynamic effects results in hypotension. Let's summarize the points. Reusigot will be used for pulmonary arterial hypertension and chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension. The pathway involved in the mechanism of reusigot will be nitric oxide, soluble guanylate cyclase, cyclic guanosine monophosphate pathway and the result will be vasodilation, anti-aggregation and anti-remodeling. Reusigot is available in 5 variants like 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2 and 2.5 mg. The dose should be titrated from low dose to 2.5 mg over interval of equal to or greater than 2 weeks. If changeover between sildenafil and reosigot need to be done, then 24 hours drug free period should be given. Need to check for pulmonary edema, which might be caused by pulmonary veno occlusive disease. In that situation, reosigot need to be discontinued. Coming to adverse reactions, the reported ones are anemia, dyspepsia, hypotension, dizziness, and headache. Coming to pharmacokinetic parameters, half-life for reosigot is 12 hours, peak plasma time is 1.5 hours. Reosigot gets metabolized via CYP1A1 and convert into M1 which is an active metabolite and then into inactive n glucuronide and gets excreted. Volume of distribution will be 30 liters, plasma protein binding will be 95%, bioavailability is 94%. And last part, contraindications. Reosigot should not be given in pregnant women and those who are taking amyl nitrate and specific and non-specific phosphodiesterase inhibitors. Thank you guys for watching this video. See you later with another topic.